Hey guys, Larry the Tractor Guy here. Hey, check this out. So we've got a W235 swather here that uh, the customer called in and said that when he turns the key on, the windshield wipers come on on their own. And then also um, there is no corner post display in the cab with the key on. And so we got out here and we're sort of chasing this and we don't even know really which direction to go so we're basically going to start unplugging controllers and i'll show you real quick um, i've unplugged the jd link controller here under this under the um, right hand side of the floorboard here sort of by the seat we're basically going to have to start unplugging controllers and see if we can isolate the problem um, we're probably going to look at can voltage here in a few moments. And so I'll show you what that looks like. But so basically this thing is just dead in the water. So we have no power up here. Our corner post display does not come on, but our command center will intermittently come on. Okay. So I'll show you, see if it'll come on here. Got the key on and we did hear it beep just then but nothing came on okay um, so stay tuned and we're going to chase this down just a little bit and see what we get into and we'll keep you posted we have pulled the corner post display out here and then also the armrest display and unplugged the connectors as you can see here and then we checked voltage and ground and we're only seeing about three volts here and about three volts here. Um, keep in mind the customer called complaining that the windshield wipers would come on on their own and then the display would power down on its own. And so it just, we've had another guy out here working on this as well and they've been chasing controller problems and couldn't really figure out what was going on. So it just kind of hit me that uh, maybe we should go back to the source of power which would be start at the battery okay so check this out we went back over to the battery and we got our voltmeter hooked up over here on the battery and i've seen some stuff like this happen before um, so we're looking at battery voltage and we're seeing 2.8485 volts so basically we don't have any voltage to our battery or coming out of our battery so we're going to hook our booster cables up and just see what we've got um, so keep in mind that if you're having a problem like this and you get in the, the machine and turn the key on and controllers are doing weird things and weird things are happening don't forget to go check your source of voltage first rather than chase a bunch of other things that do, does not exist so we're going to verify that, so stay tuned. So we did verify that we had our 12 volts after we got our booster cables hooked up. I'll probe it in there and look at our meter there. And we're showing a good 11.9 volts, which is right around sort of where we need to be if we get the battery charged up good. And then I'm going to switch over here on the corner post connector and check my can voltage. Okay, so that would be my can low. And it is super low, as you can see, because it should be somewhere around two, two and a half volts. And we've got 0 0.08. Switch over to my can high in this same connector. Check it there. Okay. Now we're seeing 0 0.28 volts on can high. So we definitely have a can communication, can voltage issue. Okay. And so we're going to sneak over here on the rear corner of the cab in our service advisor port where we would hook our laptop up and we can verify some voltage there and we do have we don't have any can voltage there okay um, we do have a little bit of can high and we do have our 12 volt supply voltage there okay so we basically have a can bus communication voltage issue. Our main communication connection is right here on this connector at the bottom of the side of the cab here on the right side. Okay, and so we're checking can voltage 
here at the Terminator by the ECU. Okay, and we are seeing very little to no CAN communication here. However, we do have our 12 volt source in our ground. Okay, so when we unplug the cab off of the communication link here, okay, we've got that unplugged. Now, check this out. So now we have recovered our CAN high and our CAN low, which both show to be a little higher than normal, but I'm pretty sure that we've eliminated our problem and isolated it to the cab, okay? So we're gonna go back in the cab and start unplugging some controllers and see what we can get to come back online. So we're back out again today on this W235 and I'll show you some of the things that we found. So one of the things that we discovered, if you'll take a look, this is the, the AM FM radio antenna that was on top of the cab. And if you can see that burnt spot there, we're pretty certain that this machine took a lightning hit because it was sitting here um, during a pretty severe um, storm that went through several weeks ago. And so we're just getting back out on this thing today and we've had to change multiple controllers because um, our CAN communication voltage was pretty well trashed due to controllers that were offline and that were shorted out and shorted to ground. So a couple things we found is these power modules. We had to change the power module um, on the chassis and the power module on top of the cab. Um, they were so hot to the touch that you couldn't even touch the power modules. And then also we had to change the out of cab control unit and load software on that. And then also we had to change, replace the cab controller up inside of the cab and the corner post PDU display. Okay, and after we replaced those, we still had a can voltage problem, okay? And so it was really odd that we came back and unplugged the engine controller here from the chassis harness. And as soon as we did that, our can voltage came back good at our terminator. Okay, so we had about uh, two and a half volts on both sides, can high and can low, and our 12 volt and ground. Um, and then when we plugged the ECU back in, it was fine, but the ECU was still offline. So I do believe that the lightning probably um, uh, damaged the engine controller as well. Okay, so we've got an engine controller ordered, and we'll put that on uh, when we get that in. But we did get all of our other controllers back online, loaded software, and we can tell that everything is working like it's supposed to other than the engine controller, okay? And so when we replace that engine controller, we'll update you and let you know how it goes. Here is a good look of all of the components that we had to replace on the W235 swather that took a lightning hit through the radio antenna. Lightning is definitely not your friend uh, when it comes to uh, this equipment and uh, so anyway uh, we got it going here and uh, the customer just used it to swath down this alfalfa patch here and it looks like everything worked out good it done a good job um, we didn't hit any fault codes or have any other wiring problems so uh, at the end of the day lightning is pretty hard on a on a machine i suppose that maybe when the lightning hit the radio antenna on top of the cab, that's what it, that looked like the point of entry. And I suppose that it probably followed the ground path, possibly. If you have a lightning strike like that on your machine, basically, you're just gonna have to start unplugging all of the controllers until you get your communication can voltage back and sort of start from there. And that's sort of what we did, uh, but we got him up and going and uh, we've got a lot of calls to make today and uh, appreciate you watching the videos and uh, larry the tractor guy signing out hey guys check out larry the tractor guy videos here other videos here subscribe here and buy all your john deere parts here we'll make it work i think gonna have to make it. we'll make it work come on let's go <laughs> we need to make you need some bloopers y'all already, already, already burning me out he's sitting in the sun over here man